Are you interested in making a wood-fired pool heater that works really well? Something that you can use year after year after year? Maybe even something better than you can buy? Well, check out this baby. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's kind of the Millennium Falcon of pool heaters. It's super fast. It's got four design elements that I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm also gonna show you how I made it. Here's the water. Yes. Is it warm enough? The information in this video is culmination of years of experience heating a pool with wood. Wood is a greenhouse gas free and cheap way to heat your pool water. My first iteration of the wood heater was made from old hot water heater tanks and some salvaged pipe. It worked pretty well for the small pool until the paint let go and it filled the water with rust. Then in 2018, I made this one. It was a game changer, increasing the temperature of a 15,000 gallon pool about a degree an hour. It has been a party saver and has increased our swim season to five months of the year. It's got two heat exchangers to capture as much heat and make it as efficient as possible. One is in the bottom area here and the other one is in the first part of the chimney. The thing that's really nice about this really long burn tube is that you can load it up with really big wood and then go do something else. Wow. It just sits there and does all the work for you. You don't have to spoon feed this baby. You need a tall chimney to keep the smoke away from the swimmers. Another really important part of the design of this pool heater that is tied into the main circulation pump. That means the water coming from the main pump can either go by the heater or we can divert it through the heater as it is now, up through, up through, out, down, and back into the pool with the full force. Despite what some people think with little trickles of hot water, you need a high volume of water running through your heater and you don't want to be messing around with some little rinky dink pump floating around in your pool when you've got thousands of BTUs of heat on that water and if it doesn't keep moving, it's going to turn to steam. This is the heat exchanger for the wood fired pool heater. I had to pull it out because I uh, didn't get all the water out of it. Got a little freeze in there with a new piece, a couple of slip couplings. And I also decided to add five more pipes, adding that much more surface area. The existing heat exchanger has operating tubes. All this other stuff that's on here is just um, some scrap copper and stuff that I've soldered on to add uh, a surface area to collect the heat from the fire. So this setup of making a solderable fitting um, in the side of a pipe, there's some fancy tools that they have out there, but um, they're really expensive. So basically what I do is I bore a hole that is 3 8 which is just about the size of the front end of this thing. This is just a uh, rod, a steel rod, and I had to put a little extra weld on the sides and then turn this down so it'd be the same diameter as a piece of pipe. This this is a street fitting, so it's you don't need it to be exactly the same. You want it to be just slightly bigger, ten thousandths bigger than uh, that, and that makes this hole which then you can put your piece in have enough surface area to solder that now I'm going to be using a high temperature silver solder brazing and get it red hot um, so it's a pretty strong joint since I do have an unknown of whether or not this metal is going to act the same as fresh metal I'm going to do one through I'm not going to drill all the holes I'm going to do one, test it, and uh, make sure because if it doesn't work right, I'm going to have to change up my plan. Now, I have this drill press going on as fast as it will go, which is pretty fast, 
at 2720 RPM and uh, you need it to go fast and you're trying to, trying to heat it and bend it kind of all at the same time and uh, sometimes you have to um, kind of stop and get it unstuck and so forth. That looks pretty good. My fitting will go in here, then my pipes will go all the way across. I might have to let it cool down at times because it does add a lot of heat and that heat will change the way that the copper reacts to the pressure and the force. I need to cut my pipe, get ready to be soldered. You gotta be clean. Oh, set up. Nice fitting in there. That's the repair, which was the reason why I had to do this in the beginning. If it weren't full, I would be actually probably running water through this baby. So I got about 60 PSI in this line. Spray these, got a little soapy water. Any leaks, they'll make bubbles. It's pretty easy to see. It's looking pretty good. Put this pivot back in. Here's the new pipes, the old pipes, those heat collectors. The fire will be burning up this way. Uh, this opening right here is just to facilitate getting it into the drum. Just getting that other pipe to go through that hole so it comes out there. Before I flip it over, I'm going to weld, weld some things in here to hold this up. quick walkthrough of where I am so far with this rebuild of the pool heater. Here's where the out port for the, the water will go, the heat exchanger. Here you can see the five new pipes on top, some of that heat collecting uh, scrap metal and then the six pipes underneath. This is where the smoke will come out and a lot of the heat. Um, and here's the in port. I threw this extender on to the front of the burn tube. So there is the heat exchanger. Um, that back side of the, uh, or the lights coming in is where all the heat's going to be going up into the chimney. I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to start putting this baby back together. This is the chimney. That's the top. We have the out port and an in port on the other side. All right there. And inside is coils of copper tubing that will um, circulate the water through, collect as much heat out of that um, chimney as possible. So it's getting it um, in two different heat exchangers for this particular water heater, pool heater. This is what the vertical heat exchanger looked like right after I made it. How I made it was I coiled pipe around this wood form that I turned on the lathe. The key to bending this kind of copper tubing is to freeze it filled with water. The ice will keep it from kinking. It comes with these little caps to hold the water in. I did mine in the winter, but you can also just throw the flat coil in your freezer. Don't worry, it doesn't burst because it just expands out the ends. Then I put it together trying to separate the coils as much as possible. This gives room for the energy to surround the cool pipes and transfer the heat. I used high temperature silver solder to braise these joints. You could probably use just regular solder, but I wanted to make sure that it was going to withstand the high temperatures. Finally, I wrapped a thin sheet of metal around it to hold in the heat and smoke. 
Solar power is still the easiest way to heat your pool. You set it on the timer, the sun's shining, the clock turns it on, puts heat into your pool. But sometimes the sun's not always shining. And when it's not, you can use a wood pool heater to pump up that heat a little bit, extend your swim season, get some warmth in there for a special event like a, a family visit or a birthday party, and uh, really enjoy your pool. It's not easy to get this much water up to temperature where people will actually stay in it for very long. And sometimes we think that fossil fuels are a good alternative, but they're not. I heat this pool without any fossil fuels. We swim in it five months out of the year for hours on end. Thanks for watching and good luck with all your greenhouse gas emission projects. How's the water? Very warm. Is it? Uh -huh. No, I'm not. The wood heater. In learning about how to use the sun to heat your pool, check out this video here. And maybe you want to see some of my other videos about how to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions and still live comfortably. Thanks.